In this video, I'd like to talk about the bolt length calculation algorithm, the algorithm which finds the right size bolt from the database and how it uh, calculates the length and the different variables that are involved in it. So let me uh, begin by saying that this is a very simple example in which we have two plates. The thickness of each plate is 10 millimeters. And then we have the top flange of an I-beam and the thickness of the flange is about 10.7. So we have a thickness of about 10 plus 10 plus 10.7, so about 31 millimeters. And um, the, the bolt has been placed over there automatically. And if I were to double click on the bolt and go to the selected bolt data, we can see that a bolt of length 55 millimeters has been selected automatically by the program. Now, obviously it includes the 31 millimeters over here. And then there's an additional length, obviously at the bottom side, because we have a nut, uh, which has a certain um, height. And then a certain amount of distance also needs to be left at the end. And the standard defines this distance. So it might say that for an M20 bolt, uh, for example, it might say that this distance needs to be say four millimeters or whatever, some number which is uh, defined in the, in the database. So according to those numbers and according to the, whether we are allowing the thread to be in the material or not, uh, which we will talk about in a second, it finds a certain length. And in this case, it has found the length of 55 millimeters for the bolts. So let me double click on that and talk about the various parameters which are involved in this calculation, which is basically this picture over here. And we'll talk about that in a second. But before we get into that, uh, let me talk about this, uh, this bolt assembly over here. So if I go into the bolt assembly dialog box, we see that we have different standards here for the various components of the bolt. So there's the bolt itself, obviously, which is, um, we have chosen the 6914 standard over here and then there is a washer there is a washer on the side of the head of the uh, of the bolt so this is the bolt head and this is the the main shaft so on the head side of the head before the material starts there is the, there is the possibility of a washer it doesn't have to be there but if you want you can place a washer uh, underneath the head between the material and the head and this will typically be used for example, in high strength bolts, because in high strength bolts, there is so much tension in the bolts because they have been tightened, the nut has been tightened and the bolt is in uh, extremely high tension that the, there could be bearing failure uh, between, uh, if, the, if, the if the head was allowed to uh, directly come in contact with the material. So there's a washer placed in between, which is bigger normally than the um, size of the head. So it basically spreads out uh, the stresses. So you can or you cannot, you, up, depending on the situation, you can have this first washer. This is what we call the first washer. And then on the other side, so there's the material in the, in the middle. And on the other side, we have the second washer. And then there's a third washer. And there are meanings of what, uh, so the second washer uh, has a certain meaning. It, it can have its own standard. And the third washer can have its own standard. And you might be wondering why why the, sta the standards of all these washers is not uh, necessarily, why do we have to define three different standards? Aren't they all supposed to be the same? Well, the answer is no, because uh, sometimes you have uh, sloped flanges, for example, the INP profiles or UNP profiles, the flanges are sloped. And in those cases, the, the, the washer on the side of the head, for example, might need to be of a different standard, might need to be a sloped washer to accommodate, to make the whole thing straight. It basically matches the slope, the inverse of the slope of the, of the flange. And so this one might be a different standard as compared to the ones, the, the second and third ones, uh, which basically always need to be straight uh, after the material or vice versa. Maybe this one could be sloped and you can um, make the choice accordingly. So they don't have to be the same standard. But you have the choice in commerce to basically choose a different standard for the first, second, and third washers. And then after that, there's a nut. Uh, typically in steel structures, we usually use just one nut. But in some cases where the 
uh, loading is dynamic and uh, there's a lot of uh, re stress reversal, uh, we might have the need of having a second nut as well because there is a risk of the first nut uh, getting loosened by the repetitive change in direction of the loads. So this is the basic structure of an assembly. There's a there's a first there's a bolt itself, the first washer, the material, the second and third washers, the first nut, and possibly a second nut. So let me just close this and get back to our example over here now. Now if you see over here, uh, we have uh, on on the head side we don't have a washer right now, and the reason for that is that we haven't selected uh, the first washer. Uh, option over here. So if we were, if you were to um, change this, for example, and say apply, Commosis will put an extra washer over there. And immediately, if you go to the selected bolt, you see that the length has been changed. Now uh, it was 55 millimeters before, and now it's 60. Let me come back over here. This option is important. It is thread in material. What it basically says is that are we allowing um, the thread in this bolt to cross into the material so this is the material the the plates the plate one the plate two and the top of the flange they represent the material which is bolted together now uh, these bolts usually do not have that they are not fully threaded it means that the thread will not go all the way the thread only goes to a certain point and the reason why we have that is because we don't want the thread to go inside the material because if, it, if that happens, then the shear planes will be weakened because of the existence of the thread. So there is the option to allow or not allow thread in the material. So right now, this means that a thread is allowed to go inside the material. And the engineer has, take, has taken whatever necessary precautions uh, needed to be taken. So maybe the, uh, the engineer has reduced the allowable load by, say, about 15% because of the presence of thread. But if we were to, for example, disallow this uh, thread in material and say apply, we will see that Commosis automatically, it doesn't have to be two washers every time. It may not even be a single washer, but it could vary between anything between no washers or one washer or two washers, depending on how long the thread of this bolt is. So even though we haven't asked for the second washer and the third washer, just because we do not want the thread to go inside the material, Commosis is forced to put these two extra washers over there. And uh, only by doing so does it ensure that the thread now uh, does not pass into the material. So you will, you will notice this, that uh, if, you don't, if you allow this, you might end up with shorter bolts in your uh, material uh, procurement list. And if you disallow this, you might end up with longer bolts. Uh, in your material list, and that's uh, something to be uh, expected. Now, if I were to not, uh, uh, if I were to allow them, allow a uh, washer, but I can still enforce the second washer if I want to. So, although it wasn't needed as far as the thread was concerned, but for other reasons, for stress-related reasons, uh, might be, I can still enforce the second washer. And in this case, the length of the bolt is 65 millimeters, for example. Let me come back over here. Let me uh, remove the uh, second washer and also disallow the threaded material. And now we get back to the other. So uh, these are the different options which you can use. And this is how the length of the bolt is automatically calculated. So the length of the bolt will be calculated that the total, um, total width of the, of the material which is being bolted will be calculated. The presence of the first washer will be added if, if it's selected. The second and third washers will either depend on your choice, whether you force them to be there or not, or it will uh, they might automatically come even if you don't force them. Uh, if, you, if you don't allow the thread in material, they might come automatically. And depending on the final choice made by the program, this, it will add this thickness, and then the second nut will come. And after that, uh, it needs to leave a certain length at the end. And then all this data will tell the program what the appropriate length of the bolt uh, should be. Now, uh, I want to talk about the second uh, nut option over here as well. The second nut option, uh, basically, like I said, it's used in those, those cases where there's a lot of dynamic loading and where there's, there's a lot of reversal of uh, stresses. 
and there is the possibility of the nut loosening so as a precaution a second nut is placed now if i were to uh, place a second nut directly uh, we will have a problem uh, as you can see it was unable to find this length and the reason why it, that happens is because it, it wasn't able to um, i mean uh, the nut became so long that the thread uh, the, the nut could not be tightened uh, because the thread length wasn't enough so either we go into the database and modify those thread lengths or we can go as we discussed uh, elsewhere as well we can go and we can allow for a non catalog uh, bolt for example so i can just maybe modify these numbers a bit and we allow for non catalog bolts and in those case i can have my uh, i can have my second nut uh, as well uh, these are the various options which I wanted to discuss in, in this video because you will be noticing that occasionally you will uh, be getting some unexpected washers. Uh, so let me go and change that. Let me come back to the. Uh, so, so it's telling me that no object is selected. Yeah. So yeah, let me come and change that. Go back to the single nut. And occasionally you will see that even though you haven't requested any second and third washers, you are still getting some washers on this side. And the reason for that will be this thread of material uh, parameter. So if you change that and you allow for that, that the thread can go in, then those washers will disappear. But if you enforce that, then like I said, uh, the program will be forced to calculate uh, whether these washers are needed or not. And if they're not needed, you might get, end up with a situation in which uh, no washer is required. But you also might end up with a situation in which uh, there is um, some washers will need to be added. So this is the summary of the Bolt automatic length calculation algorithm, which most people confuse. So I hope that this has been of use.